What's up with those weird letters they put in front of military aircraft names anyway? Why is there seemingly one for every letter of the alphabet? Well, the answer turns out to be bureaucracy. During the Cold War, when aircraft were becoming increasingly advanced, the five branches of the military still set their own designations for aircraft, which could lead to some awkward situations. The F-4 Phantom II, one of the most advanced aircraft of the time, was given the designation of F-4H and F-110 Spectre by the Air Force. No one wants to lose a multi-million dollar aircraft, so clearly something needed to change. It was time for unity. In 1962, the Tri-Service Aircraft Designation System was designed, giving almost every aircraft a unified classification. This means that every branch of the military is on the same page, which is especially important given that a few seconds delay in a mission can be life or death. Each vehicle has as many as six designations or as few as three. Each plane will have a design number and a series letter, which are used to identify the make and model of the plane. They'll also have a basic mission letter, which describes the plane's standard purpose, but in some cases they might also have a status prefix, which is used to refer to them while not conducting a normal operation. A modified mission designation refers to their status on a specialized military mission, and a vehicle type refers to certain key types of aircraft. So, let's get into the alphabet military style. A is for attack. An attack aircraft is a small tactical military aircraft that's designed for bombing missions that are supposed to be carried out with precision. They usually aren't the aircrafts that'll carry heavy-duty bombs, but rather the smaller weapons that'll target enemy installations or provide close air support on a mission. They're designed to fly close quarters air-to-surface missions and are agile enough to dodge enemy fire. This class has existed since World War II and is commonly used in military engagements. This can be used as either a basic or modified mission designation. B is for Bomber. This is the big gun. These military combat aircraft are designed to attack ground and naval targets by dropping heavy weaponry. These can be traditional or guided bombs, launching torpedoes or air-launched cruise missiles. These have been the backbone of the Air Force since it was founded, with aerial bombardments being a huge part of victory in both the First and Second World Wars. These planes run two kinds of missions, strategic bombing which is used to damage the enemy's infrastructure, and tactical bombing which counters enemy activity in the heat of battle. This designation is basic mission only. C is for cargo. Not everyone can do the combat jobs, but the planes designated to C are the backbone of the military in many ways. Cargo planes are responsible for transporting heavy equipment to the battlefield and are often invaluable in supplying soldiers. These planes usually only carry a few passengers at most, enough to ensure the safety of the cargo so they lack all the amenities of a traditional plane. Instead, they're usually hollowed out to carry as much cargo as possible and are designed for easy loading and unloading. They're often large enough for unloading tools to drive directly into the plane. This applies to both basic and modified missions. D is for Drone Director. You probably think this is the newest member of the fleet, but drones have actually been around for a very long time. During the 1950s, the 3205th Drone Group operated obsolete planes as radio-controlled targets. They were supposed to get hit by other weaponry to determine the effectiveness of the new planes. Today, this unit is long disbanded, but the designation of D usually refers to planes that are operating unmanned aircraft from the sky, giving them a human eye closer to the events but still safely separated. This is one of the rarer designations, as today, most drones are operated from bases hundreds or thousands of miles away. The letter is also used for unmanned aerial vehicle control planes as the vehicle type. E is for Electronic Warfare. Another relatively new designation, these specialized planes are multi-purpose mobile control centers. They usually have computer systems that blow any other plane out of the water. So what are they for? What aren't they for? If they're stationed near the battlefield, they might be responsible for collecting data and informing the team flying in. They might also be involved in hacking enemy systems. But the biggest of these serve as air-based bases for elite officials, including the President and Secretary of Defense allowing them to run the country from an airplane if they need to get out of Dodge in a hurry. If a lowercase e is used as the status prefix, it means the vehicle has been digitally developed. F is for fighter. If the bomber is the backbone of the Air Force, then fighter jets are its fist. These are the fastest planes in the military, designed primarily for air-to-air -air combat. That's right, these are the planes Maverick would use. These aircraft are designed to achieve air superiority by engaging and destroying enemy fighters and bombers. Some of these aircraft are multi-role and can engage in limited precision strikes. G is for permanently grounded. Okay, so not every designation can be exciting. Sometimes vehicles reach the end of their life and they need to be put out to pasture. 
but they can still be useful for research and development. Planes with the status prefix of G have either been damaged in combat or have been eclipsed by very new generations of planes, and this means they've been gracefully retired. Another type of plane, the glider, also has this designation as a vehicle type, but don't worry about the confusion. The glider is an early plane from the World Wars and has been put out to pasture as well in favor of the next plane on this list. H is for helicopter. One of the oldest vehicle types in the military's flying forces and certainly the oldest still in use, these small planes are rotorcraft, which are propelled into the air by horizontally spinning rotors. They're lightweight aircraft that generally aren't heavily armed, but they're effective at transporting small numbers of soldiers into enemy territory and are commonly used for search and rescue missions for both military and civilian purposes. But don't count them out in the military. Black Hawk helicopters were key in getting the team into location for the mission that killed Osama bin Laden. If a plane has this as the modified mission designator, it's being used on a search and rescue mission. J is for Special Test Temporary. This status prefix is for planes that have been loaned out to participate in tests of new technology or mission parameters. They're usually an established aircraft that has proven itself on the battlefield and is being used as the template for a new model. They'll be taken out of the field, delivered to a base or testing range, and used as a test model for the duration of the experiment, before usually being restored to their base model and returned to the field if possible. K is for Tanker. Another unsung hero of the military aircraft world, tankers are essentially mobile fuel tanks. Today, it's common for planes to have to fly long distances on missions, so how did they stay fueled all that time? They refuel in midair by hooking up to one of these massive beasts. A flexible hose is extended from the tanker into the sky, with the smaller plane precisely hooking up to it and taking in that sweet, sweet fuel. This is an incredibly tricky maneuver, and multiple deadly accidents have happened during the development process. So today's tankers are more user-friendly than ever before and are keeping our planes in the air. This can be both a modified and a basic mission prefix. L is for laser equipped. This is one of the rarest basic mission prefixes today, but it might not be for long. The use of high-powered lasers on military vehicles is becoming increasingly common, but right now they're primarily used on naval ships. Once they become smaller, easier to produce, and more portable, they might be mounted on planes, giving the airplane a weapon for either destroying enemy planes or targets, or temporarily blinding an enemy. But surprisingly, this designation means something completely different for a modified mission prefix. It means the plane has been modified for cold weather operations, and is likely being sent into an Arctic raid. M is for multi-mission. This modified mission prefix won't show up too often, but if it does, odds are something special is afoot. This is a plane that's usually being sent on a more complex mission that could go either way depending on circumstances. It might be a reconnaissance spy plane that's equipped with weapons if it needs to fight its way out, or a cargo plane equipped with electronic spying technology. The odds are, if you have to ask what one of these planes is for, your clearance isn't high enough to find out. N is for Special Test Permanent. This status prefix is for planes that have been specifically designed as test vehicles. They're never going to see combat again and usually have long service lives as they're frequently modified to test out new technology. Some of these are prototypes, while others have taken too much damage in combat, but can still fly, so they get this designation in lieu of being permanently grounded. O is for Observation. These planes, which can be either a modified or basic mission designation, are usually either unarmed or only contain defensive weapons. Their primary function is surveillance and are often responsible for spotting enemy forces and weaponry before the armed planes head in. While they're a key part of military operations, they're also often the last planes left in an area as peacekeeping forces. While they're still heavily used today, they're slowly being replaced by unmanned vehicles that collect footage and send it back to the command center for analysis. If it's being used as a basic mission prefix, it's being operated by forward air control, which is responsible for preventing friendly fire casualties in combat. P is for Maritime Patrol. This is for any vehicle that patrols over an open body of water, usually either at a port or surrounding an island military base. While boats often take the role of maritime patrol, it can be handled by aircraft when needed. This is especially common during wartime or when a port is requiring enhanced security. These planes' jobs usually is to watch for any unusual boat or air traffic coming into the location, either turning them back or directing them for inspection, and if needed, shooting them out of the sky. This can be either a basic or modified mission prefix, but the latter is more common for observation, fighter, or attack planes that carry out this role. Q is for Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. This is one of the newest designations, so it's not a surprise that it's stuck with Q. 
This can be either a modified mission or vehicle type designator, and it applies to any plane that's meant to be operated remotely. They can be operated from a base or from an aerial drone operator. While they're initially used for observation and collecting intel, today's drones are increasingly advanced and can be used to carry out bombing missions or even, in some cases, more precisely targeted missions against solitary targets. R is for reconnaissance. Similar to observation planes but much more advanced, reconnaissance aircraft are usually sent in to conduct scouting of enemy territory. These planes are usually designed to be as stealthy as possible and are often nicknamed spy planes. Lightweight aircraft with minimal defense capabilities, their goal is to get in and out without being noticed and come back with advanced intelligence on enemy capabilities, the location of their troops and the leaders, and the facilities they might be hiding in. This is both a basic and modified mission prefix, and the success or failure of a mission is often determined before the mission even begins thanks to these planes. S is for anti-submarine warfare. The battle against enemy naval forces isn't just fought on and under the sea, it's often planes that provide a key edge to detect enemy submarines first. These planes are typically equipped with sonar capabilities and can provide early warning, but how do they tell which side a submarine is on? Friendly fire was a major problem in the world wars, so the analysis of acoustic signatures can often provide vital clues. This is both a modified and a basic mission prefix. But if you find a plane with a vehicle prefix of S, it means something completely different. It's a space plane. This is a rocket-powered vehicle that can fly and glide in Earth's atmosphere before taking on the function of a traditional spacecraft in outer space. While these are non-combat aircraft for now, if the space race ever gets particularly… intense, it'll be these vehicles that give us the edge. T is for Trainer Training the future pilots of the military forces is one of the most important jobs the Air Force has, but it comes with a risk. If you send your pilots up an elite aircraft right at the start, you stand the risk of losing a massive investment every time someone washes out. So what's the answer? Trainer aircraft – smaller and specially designed aircraft with enhanced safety features. These can include tandem flight controls, a simplified cockpit, and warning systems to alert pilots of their mistakes. These are usually light aircrafts that are easier to handle, making sure the pilot has the basic skills perfected before they get their hands on the big guns. This can be both a modified and basic mission prefix. U is for utility. This is an all-purpose light airplane or helicopter, usually used for basic duties like troop or supply transport. It can be equipped with weapons, but it won't be able to pull off the more precise military missions of specialized aircraft. This can be both a basic and modified mission prefix, because when you need quick troop or supply transport, almost any aircraft can be designated as a utility vehicle. But the military always has some of these ready to go if they need an old reliable without risking one of their big guns. V is for VIP. If a plane has a modified mission marker of V, that means it's been taken out of service to transport a key person in the operation. This might be a president or secretary of defense visiting a battlefield to support the troops, or it could be a hostage being rescued and taken back home. It could even be a wanted enemy leader who has been captured and is being transported for trial but this plane will likely be the most highly guarded in the entire squadron. But if it has a vehicle type designation of V, it means something very different. It's a plane that's being designed for vertical takeoff or short takeoff and landing, so it can land in places without traditional runways. These are commonly used for emergency pickups and drop-offs. W is for weather reconnaissance. It's not just enemy forces that pose a key danger to planes. Weather can be unpredictable, and any changes in weather conditions can compromise a mission. A sudden lightning storm could result in the loss of a billion-dollar aircraft. A heavy cloud cover could obscure the bombing location of a terrorist's hideout. That's why weather reconnaissance planes are sent in, and this modified mission designation usually refers to any plane outfitted to scout ahead and radio back about weather conditions before the mission proceeds. X is for experimental. This can be either a status prefix or a basic mission designation. It also refers to any experimental plane that's in the process of being used for special research. Also called X-planes, they're used to test and evaluate new techniques, technologies, and models. There have been over 50 in U.S. military history, and many have become the foundations for quantum leaps in U.S. aircraft technology. Y is for prototype. One step before the experimental phase, these are planes that aren't meant to fly yet. They're the base models that are built on, and some advance to becoming experimental while others are scrapped when the model just doesn't work. You'll never see a plane with a Y status prefix on the battlefield, but you might find some unique models on the grounds of any Air Force base. Z is for lighter than air. 
This used to be the status prefix for planes in the planning phase, but this designation was combined with prototype eventually, since you don't need a separate designation for planes that aren't built yet. Instead, it's been given to a very different type of plane as a vehicle type designation, planes that use buoyant gas for lift. These balloon-like vehicles have limited military application today, but can be used for unconventional operations. But what about those letters and numbers you see above the cockpit on civilian planes? What's up with those? Is there some top secret code there as well? No, these are just aircraft registration assigned in the factory. Not everything has some big code to it. The same can't be said about the military. Want to know more about the military secrets? Check out the most insane weapons the US military is actually using today, or Military Army Hand Signals Explained, for more of their trade secrets.